Hi everybody, this is Brian Coffrin from GangstalkerWars.com. I wanted to say thank you to everyone for being a part of this historic conference. I wanted to say a special thank you to Allison Ireland uh, for all the hard work that you have done in making this event possible. We need more events like this to bring public awareness to the issue of targeted individuals and the use of frequency weapons against American citizens in the United States of America today. I also wanted to say a special thank you to my supporters, everyone who has supported me and donated through my website over the past year. You are the reason that I was able to survive. And you are the reason that I, the only reason that I got through everything I've been through over this past year. I wanted to say thank you to each and every one of you personally uh, for your support. And to let anyone know that's not aware, my website is gangstalkerwars.com. And you can make a donation by clicking on the make a donation button uh, right there. At GangstalkerWars.com, we are now going to be releasing a series of um, news articles that we are putting together through exclusive confidential sources that we, we have been able to cultivate within military intelligence, within private corporations, and within the targeted individual community. Uh, our goal in this is to bring justice to targeted individuals uh, and to get compensation for targeted individuals for what we now know amounts to a experimental research and development program against them using frequency weapons that are being researched and developed for military and intelligence purposes. Uh, GangstalkerWars.com, we also have a podcast. Uh, we have two so far, and we are hoping with your support to come out with more, hopefully one every week at least, and we're eventually trying to come out with a daily podcast of about two, three hours where we cover all of the news uh, that's affecting targeted individuals, uh, frequency weapons, organized stalking, have updates on the laws and legislation that's being passed, uh, the involvement of politicians, private corporations, and of course, military and military intelligence. Uh, we're trying to make Gang Stalker Wars a central location where people can go for all the information uh, that you need to be up to date on the latest, latest breaking developments uh, concerning targeted individuals. For those of you who don't know a little bit more about me, uh, like I said, my name is Brian Coffrin. I am a former security specialist for security industry specialists headquartered in Culver City, California, and I worked out of their office in uh, Seattle, Washington. It was during my time with security industry specialists that I became aware that my company was involved in using frequency weapons and organized stalking tactics against uh, the homeless population of Seattle, Washington. I later found out that they were also using frequency weapons against their own employees. When I became aware of this activity, I resigned in protest in January of this year, 2017, and I immediately reported these crimes to the FBI, local, and state police in the Department of Justice. Uh, as many of you may be aware, my company, SIS, was contracted with the Amazon Corporation, and it was on Amazon property where SIS employees were experimented on and tortured with frequency weapons uh, that included voice to skull, hive mind, behavior modification, and what we at Gangstalker Wars have termed total individual control technology that involves the use of implants, nanotechnology, and the use of microwave and radio frequencies uh, that are directed at the targeted individual for the purposes of inducing voices within their head, uh, thoughts within their mind, controlling dreams, uh, rewiring neuropathways, controlling the electrical signals that control the human minds, also, this technology is capable of controlling an individual's emotions, and it is capable of controlling an individual's actions. It can control the vital systems of the body. It can also control the endocrine system of the body and major organs. 
It can be used to increase stamina. It can be used to induce pain. It can be also used to see through the eyes of the target and hear through the ears of the target. And it was these aspects of the technology that my company, SIS, was particularly interested in. It is also aspects of the technology that our military and intelligence agencies are particularly interested in. Um, this technology is truly invasive. It is uh, extremely damaging to the targeted individual. The long-term effects of being subject subjected to microwave frequencies and radio frequencies 24 hours a day, seven days a week have documented um, effects on the human body, eyesight, hearing, overall and general health, uh, the deterioration of joints and bones and muscles, and uh, the deterioration of teeth, the enamel in teeth, tooth loss, and the overall deterioration of health are known um, health risks uh, and damaging effects of frequency weapons. Uh, we are also aware of gangs at gangstalkerwars.com of several individuals who have been killed by this technology. Um, this technology is being used to murder American citizens and it is something that needs to be exposed and it's something that needs to be stopped immediately. As I mentioned, um, my company was contracted with the Amazon Corporation. Amazon is one of the largest corporations in the world and it was on Amazon property where SIS employees were being experimented on. This took place in the Amazon campus in downtown Seattle where Amazon, uh, due to its, its success as a corporation, has built over 50 uh, skyscrapers and buildings in downtown Seattle. There's an entire section of downtown Seattle that's called Amazonia because this corporation so thoroughly dominates the city center there. Uh, it is highly concerning to us at GangstalkerWars.com and this has this information has been avail made available to the FBI of Amazon's involvement in this illegal program that is uh, targeting and torturing American citizens. Um, in Amazon-owned buildings, the employees of SIS were being experimented on with frequency weapons. During my time at SIS, I also became aware of the fact that this illegal program that some have described as a social engineering program, the use of frequency weapons to engineer society to the liking of those who control this technology. It is also a research and development program where aspects of the military industrial intelligence complex of our country are partnering with corporations and private companies like Amazon and SIS to experiment on human test subjects with frequency weapons for their research and development for military intelligence applications. It is in this context that this technology is being used in Seattle right now against the homeless population of Seattle. And because of my time at SIS, I am aware of the involvement of DESC, Downtown Emergency Services Center, which is a homeless shelter uh, located at 505 3rd Avenue in Seattle, Washington, 98104. They also have another homeless shelter located at 157 Roy Street in Queen Anne, Washington, where homeless men and women who are housed in their homeless shelters are being experimented on with frequency weapons that include voice to skull, behavior modification, and total individual control aspects of the technology. It is important to understand that there is a tacit approval that has been given by someone uh, in a very powerful position within this country to homeless shelters, mental health um, agencies, mental health organizations, and also medical doctors uh, to use this technology, frequency weapons, uh, to experiments on or to treat covertly without the patient's knowledge uh, psychiatric patients and also pain patients. Uh, we at Gangstalker Wars have found out that within the pain management um, industry frequency weapons are being used to treat pain and pain related symptoms. It's also being used of course in the mental health industry and uh, much of this is being done 
uh, in an illegal manner where, where people are being given false psychological diagnoses in order to get them into psych psychiatric programs so that this technology can be used against them. Okay, moving along, let's get into shielding and some of the things that targeted individuals can do to protect themselves and defend themselves from the effects of the technology. When it comes to shielding, I found that the material that works best in most cases is copper. Unfortunately, copper is extremely hard uh, to come by in the most effective form, which are these thin metal sheets. If you can get your hands on these, do so. They're usually only available through the mail. You have to order them. Uh, if anybody finds a good retailer where you can go in and buy these in a f store, please let the rest of us know. The idea with copper and with most shielding techniques is the electrical principle of grounding. What you want to do is ground yourself and ground the, the things surrounding you to uh, get rid of the electrostatic charge that builds up throughout the day on your body. And by grounding yourself, you will greatly reduce the effects of the technology against you. When it comes to copper sheets, what I have found to be extremely effective, I'll lay down a layer of aluminum foil and then I'll lay down a copper sheet on top of that. Take off your shoes and your socks and with your bare feet, rest your feet on top of the copper sheet. Make sure that the arch on the bottom of your foot, that middle point there, is actually touching the copper. Uh, that is a point that is significant in terms of the electromagnetic field of your body. As long as it is touching the copper, it will electrically ground your body and it will greatly reduce the effects of the technology. Wood is also a great material for grounding. Uh, if you can, stay away from carpets, stay away from cloth couches, and instead stand with bare feet on a wooden floor also sit in wooden chairs anytime you can. I've also found that holding, simply holding pieces of wood in the palm of your hands, uh, the palm of your hands are also an electromagnetically uh, significant area on the body. When you hold wood in your hands, it will help to electrically ground you. Uh, you can also take wood and place it on your forehead, uh, also on the top of your head and you will notice a grounding effect and an immediate lessening of the negative effects of the technology. The same principle applies to grounding mats or anti-static mats. These are used by electricians who work on electrical equ equipment who do not want to electrocute themselves while working. These can be found in many stores like Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart sometimes carries them. They also have grounding yoga mats that people use for yoga. The idea with these is you plug them into the wall to the grounding port in your standard electrical outlet in your wall in your house, at least within the United States. Uh, here it's different in Europe, uh, so do your own research online, but you, you plug these in and the entire mat is grounded. And so when you um, rest your exposed bare skin on the mat, it will ground your body as well. You can stand on it with bare feet. You can rest uh, a bare arm on it uh, so the bare skin is touching it and it will electrically ground you. Uh, these are fairly affordable and it's a great way to lessen the effects of the technology. Magnets as well can be used with great effects uh, to protect yourself from the technology. I think we're all familiar with neodymium magnets, which can be expensive and hard to come by, but those are very expensive, are uh, very effective. If you hold them up to areas in your body where you know you have an implant, uh, a neodymium magnet held against an implant for a period of about 24 to 48 hours, if you have the endurance to do that, uh, it can actually uh, deactivate the implant. If you can't find any sufficiently large neodymium magnets, uh, you can try these ceramic magnets. I got these at Michael's for about $10.99, and they also sell them at Walmart. They got them for about 7 bucks there. And what you do is you make a roll of these magnets. As you can see here, they're individual magnets. They're attracted now. What you want to do is have them repelling each other. You want to force them together, repelling each other, wrap them in duct tape, and carry them around with you. And each roll will create about a four-foot electromagnetic field around you that will interfere with the frequency signal that is attacking you from the technology. And it will provide you a great deal of relief from the negative effects of the technology. The other thing you can do with these is wrap some of these repelling magnets wrapped in duct tape in aluminum foil. 
and put that on the on your forehead right against your frontal lobe right above the eyebrows and right in the spot in between your eyebrows uh, where the third eye would be the pineal gland and place them there and if these two rolls of these opposing magnets wrapped in aluminum foil placed over my forehead in that area actually completely stopped the voice to skull aspects of the technology it completely canceled it out so that was highly effective for me and it is a very good cheap way to defend yourself from the voice to skull aspects of the tech when it comes to shielding uh, there's a lot of research out there and so I would say do your own research and find out what works best for you but there's a guy out there uh, Tony Palin Palantaresco, and I'm pretty sure I butchered that. I'm sorry, Tony, uh, but this is his YouTube channel, Herbs Plus Beadworks, and this guy is absolutely brilliant. He's accumulated just a ton of outstanding information on all things shielding for uh, electromagnetic frequencies, radio frequencies, and also the effects of nanotechnology and some of the barium and strontium and, and the stuff that's in the chemtrails that we're, we are being constantly bombarded with in this country. Check out his uh, YouTube channel. Again, it's Herbs Plus Bead Works. He also has a website, which is augmentinforce.50webs.com, and a lot of outstanding information there on shielding. Another thing I wanted to bring to people's attention is the YouTube channel of a guy who goes by the name Dennis the Tortured. This is a targeted individual who is a, just a brilliant brilliant man and he's come up with a absolutely ingenious way to detect implants uh, within targeted individuals and I want to make sure he gets full credit for this discovery because as we all know what we go through with uh, being a targeted individual he put in a lot of work and a lot of time and he came up uh, with some great discoveries that could benefit us all so again this is compliments of Dennis the Tortured on YouTube and in this video right here the huge secrets for targeted individuals he shares with us a method to detect implants and it is by using the super ear app that you can download onto your cell phone it's a very simple app what you want to do is set it to the indoor setting turn the app all the way up get a pair of headphones plug them into your cell phone put one headphone in one ear and hold the microphone of your cell phone up to any part of your body to see if you have an implant if you have an implant you will hear an extremely loud beeping and then an extremely loud screeching and screaming sound that is unmistakable and if you hear that then that your microphone is over a part of your body that has an implant and this is important extremely important for targeted individuals because it is evidence that we can use to tell people you know they can no longer tell us that we're crazy or these are psychiatric symptoms of a mental condition when we have actual physical implants in us that we can prove that we have uh, through this ingenious method of detection uh, using the super ear app so thanks again to Dennis the tortured for that discovery uh, good work and I hope you're doing well Dennis your uh, your information certainly helped me out a lot uh, finally in terms of shielding I think we all know that the one surefire way, foolproof way to defend yourself from frequency weapons is a Faraday cage. Faraday cages, unfortunately, though, are very large, they're very expensive, and you need a permanent residence where you can build one of these things in order to take advantage of its protective qualities. Uh, they're built with copper, some people use aluminum, they also use uh, steel is an effective material, and you can see some of the more elaborate models. Uh, and they can get pretty expensive and as a targeted individual uh, career sabotage character assassination and all the stuff we go through it's often very difficult to come up with the amount of money that one needs to build one of these but if you have the financial resources and a permanent place where you can build one of these you can build one and they are uh, extremely effective the most effective way to protect yourself from the effects of frequency weapons. Uh, so I would recommend, if possible, everybody do that, um, because short of that, uh, there really is no way that I'm aware of to fully protect yourself from the technology. And that is why we need uh, legal action. That is why we need people in positions of power in this country to do something about what is being done to innocent American citizens. On that topic, that brings us to SAIC. SAIC is a 
very powerful defense contractor that is involved in the research and development of highly sophisticated state-of-the-art technology for military and intelligence applications. Some of you may have heard about SAIC, if you have studied at all the attacks of September 11th. It turns out that SAIC is a manufacturer of directed energy weapons and is involved in the research and development of directed energy weapons. And they were made semi-famous within the alternative research community uh, by, the, by the outstanding work of Dr. Judy Wood, a former professor of mechanical engineering who actually sued Applied Research Associates and Science Applications International Corporation, SAIC, for the work they did for NIST in preparing the report that supposedly explained the destruction of the World Trade Center buildings on September the 11th, 2001. Of course, their fraudulent report claimed that jet fuel, burning jet fuel, weakened the trusses and caused a pancake collapse of the World Trade Center. Of course, this is factually untrue. And in publishing this report, Science Applications International Corporation, Applied Research Associates, and others uh, on behalf of NIST produced a fraudulent scientific report with taxpayer dollars. And since one cannot sue the federal government of the United States of America, uh, you can't sue them, but you can sue the contractors that they hire with taxpayer dollars, and they are obligated to produce scientifically truthful uh, reports with taxpayer money. They failed to do so in the uh, case of the NIST report concerning the 9-11 attacks, and as a result, they were sued by Dr. Judy Wood uh, in relation to those attacks. SAIC, like I said, is involved with the development of directed energy weapons. Directed energy weapons, of course, are the general category of weapon that frequency, hive mind, voice to skull, total individual control, psychotronic weapons fall under. And because we know Science Applications International Corporation is involved in the research and development of these kind of weapons, we are not surprised to find them connected to such initiatives as the Brain Initiative, which was supported by President Obama and carried out by DARPA. DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. And under the BRAIN initiative, DARPA is researching and developing neurotechnology. It is studying the human brain, neuropathways, and how the human brain functions, and studying the human brain with an eye towards merging it with sophisticated technology. There is a subsection of the BRAIN initiative that is called subnets, which involves the implanting of microchips into human beings in the human brain. And some of the applications for this technology that is being researched under the BRAIN initiative is restoring active memory, revolutionizing prosthetics, and on and on it goes. Um, reversing, and here you can see the systems-based neurotechnology for emerging therapies of the subnets program that I referred to. I mentioned SAIC because as you dig deeper into what's been going on in this country within the covert aspects of our military industrial intelligence complex, you find the name SA, SAIC popping up all over the place. This is a 2015 article written by Nafez Ahmed, a brilliant independent journalist who wrote this article titled How the CIA Made Google Inside the Secret Network behind mass surveillance, endless war, and Skynet. And the reason I refer to this is because this article details research and development programs and think tanks that were intimately involved in the creation of what we would now call the surveillance state. A surveillance state that is, as you can see, started being researched and developed back in the mid-1990s, and we now have seen come to full fruition in our time in 2017. And this surveillance state now uses frequency weapons, highly intrusive brain hacking technology in the form of psychotronic weapons that can read minds, induce voices and thoughts within human beings' minds. And it is now being used as GangstalkerWars.com has learned, not only in a research and development capacity, but it is being used in an operational capacity against political dissidents within the United States of America. 
quoting from the article here, in 1999, the CIA created its own venture capitalism investment capital investment firm, InQtel, to fund promising startups that might create technologies useful or for intelligence agencies. But the inspiration for InQtel came earlier, when the Pentagon set up its own private sector outfit. Known as the Highlands Forum, this private network is operated as a bridge between the Pentagon and powerful American elites outside the military since the mid-1990s. Despite changes in civilian administrations, the network around the Highlands Forum has become increasingly successful in dominating U.S. defense policy. And that's very important because it's forums like this and think tanks like this that are, as we just read, dominating U.S. defense policy. And it is U.S. defense policy that is putting forward initiatives like the Brain Initiative and putting forward initiatives for the research and development of directed energy weapons and frequency weapons, psychotronic weapons that are now being used against targeted individuals all over America. Uh, continuing, giant defense contractors like Booz Allen Hamilton and Science Applications International Corporation, SAIC, are sometimes referred to as the shadow intelligence community due to the revolving doors between them and government and their capacity to simultaneously influence and profit from defense policy. And that is a dangerous combination right there for any country that imagines itself to be free or aspires to be free, simultaneously influencing and profiting from defense policy. But while these contractors compete for power and money, they also collaborate where it counts. The Highlands Forum has for 20 years provided an off-the-record space for some of the most prominent members of the shadow intelligence community to convene with senior U.S. government officials alongside other leaders in relevant industries. And it goes on. The Highlands Forum, Clippinger wrote, was founded by a retired U.S. Navy Captain Dick O'Neill. Delegates include senior U.S. military officials across numerous agencies and divisions, captains, rear admirals, generals, colonels, majors, and commanders, as well as members of DOD leadership. And it goes on to detail. SAIC, which stands for the U.S. Defense Firm Science Applications International Corporation, which changed its name to Litos in 2013, operating SAIC as a subsidiary. SAIC Litos is among the top 10 largest defense contractors in the U.S. and works closely with the U.S. intelligence community, especially the NSA. According to investigative journal journalist Tim Shorrock, Hope I'm pronouncing that right. The first to disclose the vast extent of the privatization of U.S. intelligence with his seminal book, Spies for Hire. SAIC has a symbiotic relationship with the NSA. The agency is the company's largest single customer, and SAIC is the NSA's largest contractor. And it goes on, and I suggest that everybody read this brilliant article by Nafez Ahmed entitled, How the CIA Founded Google. I bring this up because the Highlands Forum that we just read about in that article had its first meeting in Carmel Highlands, which is located next to Monterey, California, in California. Monterey, California is home to the Defense Language Institute. The Defense Language Institute is involved in training young military men and women, soldiers, Marines, sailors, and airmen in foreign languages and they will then be utilized in a military intelligence capacity for our country. I bring this up because this Highlands Forum, which involves SAIC, is meeting at Carmel Highlands, which is located near the Defense Language Institute. GangstalkerWars.com, through a confidential source that, remains to, that uh, wishes to remain anonymous at this time, has informed us that frequency weapons, Hive mind psychotronic weapons are being used against U.S. service men and women in the Monterey, California area. This area is a hub for not only military intelligence, but extremely wealthy private business families, properties, and of course people associated with naval intelligence, military intelligence, and the Defense Language Institute. GainStalkerWars.com has learned through other confidential sources, that it is not only 
servicemen and women of our armed forces that are being subjected to frequency weapons, but it is also their friends and their family and the people surrounding them in their lives in a program that very much resembles the targeted individual program. So here we have in Monterey, California, evidence of the fact that frequency weapons are being used against our servicemen and women in our armed forces and against military intelligence personnel. This is a major national security problem for our country and it needs to be addressed immediately. Continuing with SAIC, SAIC not only is the involved in the development of directed energy weapons, but as you can see here in a declassified CIA document obtained through the Freedom of Information Act, they are also involved in the cognitive sciences and the research and development of technologies that are related to the cognitive sciences. Here you see the Cognitive Science Laboratory in Palo Alto, California. Here you can see on the Central Intelligence Agency's own website the SAIC experiment database. They have so many contracts with the military intelligence community that they actually have an entire database dedicated to them on the CIA's website. And here you can see this in reference to, again, the Cognitive Sciences Laboratory, the exact same kind of scientific research that is being done within DARPA's Brain Initiative and the exact same type of scientific research that is being supported and promoted by the Highlands Forum, which involves the DOD, SAIC, uh, the Office of Net Assessment, and other military intelligence, the NSA and CIA, who are now, as you read in that article, uh, in control of U.S. defense policy. And here we see, again in reference to SAIC, a reference to the protection of human test subjects in research. This again is found on the Central Intelligence Agency's own website in documents that were released as part of the Freedom of Information Act. Here you see this same declassified document, the protection of human subjects in research. And this of course proves that elements of our national security state are in fact experimenting on human test subjects, just like I uh, testified to is going on in Seattle, Washington. And, and lower in this article you can see that it is uh, SAIC, once again, that is named in connection uh, with these crimes. And the list goes on and on. I encourage everyone to visit sometime uh, the declassified document section through the Freedom of Information Act on the CIA's website. Uh, there is much that you will learn there uh, about all things having to do with this. DARPA spends $65 million to fund brain-computer interfaces that can cure diseases. This is what's going on, ladies and gentlemen, in the United States of America today. This is why you are receiving voice-to-skull transmissions. This is why you are being attacked with microwave and frequency weapons. You are, unfortunately, being used by the national security state, the military-industrial intelligence complex of this country for the purposes of researching and developing highly sophisticated state-of-the-art technology that is primarily concerned with the human mind and how it operates, how to hack it, and how to harness its computing power to inform AI technology in the future and inform the computer systems of our military, military intelligence, and major corporations in this country so that they can game plan out scenarios and simulations so that they can make the best decisions possible concerning the future of our country. The problem with this entire thing, of course, is as we just saw, they are experimenting on human beings, you and me, and many, many others. And this needs to be brought to the attention of lawmakers. It needs to be brought to the attention of law enforcement and agencies with the proper jurisdiction, investigative powers, and the power of arrest to look into these people, to shut down these programs, to pursue any relevant judicial action against them, but most importantly, to stop the illegal experimentation and torture of innocent American citizens that is going on each and every day. As we already mentioned, this is being used for experimental purposes. What you might not know is that GangstalkerWars.com has found out that this technology has now gone operational and has gone live and is being used in an operational capacity within the United States of America today. 
and it is being used in that context against, and I'm quoting our source here, against free thinking, awake and aware individuals who have the courage to speak out about what is going on in this country. In other words, this technology is being used against political dissidents who do not agree with what is going on within the corridors of power within the United States of America today. And that is a dangerously disturbing trend. And the fact that you are a targeted individual means that you are one of these free thinking, awake and aware individuals. You are the very people that some people in power in this country are very scared of. They are worried that people like you exist and they are trying to literally reprogram our minds uh, to be more to their liking, to be more docile, to be more asleep, to be less intelligent and to uh, be more submissive to their power and to their will over us in our own lives. And we must never let this happen. We must remember who we are. We must remember who we were before we became targeted individuals. And we must remember who it is that they are trying to program out of us. And it is ourselves, our true selves, that believe in liberty and democracy and freedom and the constitutional rule of law as the only legal and justifiable law of the land and that we must return to that and adhere to that uh, stringently and without question if we wanted to survive as a country and and survive as the America we all grew up knowing and loving and supporting. Uh, so hang in there TIs. I want to thank all of you again for your support. I want to thank Allison again for putting on this uh, great conference and uh, thank you all.